the other bits of the pieces that we are trying to fix is how to have a harmonized approach for the delivery of water service in Ghana. The operational documents that were prepared were prepared specifically for projects. Now we want to look at how can we have operational document that will serve the need of all the sector stakeholders. We are now preparing a strategy for delivering water services with CWSA. We are preparing the project implementation manual and then we are also looking at the guidelines. We believe that once we have this and we have common agreement as a sector, we can have some coherence in how water service is delivered. Coherence is not fully there. It's not fully there because each donor and each NGO has implemented projects based on what they think should be, rather than this is the national frame, these are the national standards, and this is how it should be done. The other importance to have coherence is because CWSC, which is the Community Water and Sanitation Agency, just had a legislative instrument passed for regulating the sector. And you cannot properly regulate if there's no frame and reference point for the regulation. So these documents can also be reference points, which we have agreed upon, so we can say you ought to have done this this, this way based on the documents. For now, that broad agreement is not there. And without that, it will be very difficult to really have proper regulation of the sector. But so there will be some negotiable things and there will be some non-negotiable things. The non-negotiable things would be something like water quality. It should be a requirement that if you want to provide water service, you provide and you have to go through all that process to satisfy that the quality is good. The other non-negotiable uh, issue would also be on issues around the technology. Because government has agreed on standards and they've identified a number of technology to use. So we don't have so many technologies. We have cases where some communities have been provided with a water system. The system was imported from somewhere. As soon as it broke down, they couldn't fix it. So at least we have some standards and agreements around that. The other non-negotiable thing that is also likely to happen could be the, the distance uh, geographically. If maybe we have standard as to number of persons per borehole, we can't have them spread in one area when the other part is left out. So issues around spread, targeting to ensure equity, and then also ensure that we are at least providing water to minimum number of people as per the national standard uh, would have to be adhered to. At the moment, we have people give, providing one borehole, and then they go about saying, we have supplied the whole community. How many boreholes, how many standpoints do we have per person? And that can help manage issues around time that people spend, manage issues around crowding, and then also manage issues on um, like the, the, the facility itself not being put under undue pressure. So those could be some basic minimum non-negotiable uh, issues. I think one of the things that we will be doing in terms of coordination and coherence at the district level is once we have these documents, we would use the pilot districts as pilots for implementing these documents. Uh, let's see if these non-negotiables are all that we require or there should be more. Or we should have some flexibility around the non-negotiable and bring others in. So one of the things that we'll be doing is to look at coordination. Coordination in terms of meeting the standards for doing uh, providing water service. Coordination in terms of how plans are prepared. 
At the moment, we have situations where some NGOs just walk into communities without going to the district assembly. So we have some projects being done outside the district assembly plan. Some projects are also being provided, not looking at the standard, because we have standards in terms of what facility to provide to what population. So if it is 5,000 and above, they get a small town system. If it is 300, they get a, a, a source point. And so all those things need to be looked at so that we have some consistency in, in, in the provision. So issues around the planning, and then we also also be looking at the monitoring. The water mapping that we did, what we did was to cover all the systems in the district so that all the systems in the district can be captured in the district assembly database. So we know what is happening irrespective of who provided the service. At the moment, the projects are tagged. So they will say, this is World Vision Project. This is CEDAR Project. But if we have some coordination around the monitoring, then irrespective of whoever provided the facility, when the system breaks down, the owners should be on the assembly to support the communities to fix those systems. For now, most of the development partners are interested in providing resources for new investments. There are discussions to look at for every project that is designed, there should be a window period for post-construction support, a window period to help prepare the communities in terms of training, to help them to start operating the system before the NGO withdraws. So that could be one of the things that we are looking at. We are also trying to encourage uh, development partners that when they support the sector, they don't just look at new investments, but they could have support to what happens uh, after the system has been provided. But that will be some of the negotiations that as IRC and Triple S will be facilitating. Our work is to facilitate the dialogue and so we we'll help them to have those platforms where they can come to consensus around some of these issues. Mm. Are you making any